I personally think that long introductions on YouTube are the dumbest thing in the world. And because of that, I'm going to do exactly two things in this video. Number one, I'm going to shamelessly plug the set of modded Minecraft servers that I have set up, I manage, I run, I keep up to date. And secondly, I'm going to show you how to set up your own All The Mod 7 server on Linux. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? I currently have my main vanilla server and 15 modded Minecraft servers up and running right now. But by the end of this, I plan to have well over 150 total servers running at once. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. All right, now it's important to note that we're assuming two things at the very beginning of this video. Number one, that you have some sort of Linux system to install the server on. And number two, that Linux is already up to date. This isn't a video on how to install Linux or how to update Linux. It's a video on how to install all the mod seven. From there, what we're going to want to do is download the server pack for all the mod seven. And the easiest way to do that is from CurseForge's website. So open up a web browser and you can either search for all the mod seven server pack or you can go to curseforge.com and find it there. So once you're on CurseForge's website, you go to the mod packs tab and then you can search for all the mods. So once you find the all the mod seven mod pack page on CurseForge, you go down and you click the files tab, which is closer to the left hand side of the screen. After that, you can scroll down and you'll see a whole bunch of files to download. But the important part is this section called additional files. This is where you find the server files that you need to download. So we'll click the download button there. Uh, and, and we'll let that download. Now, while that's downloading, you might as well go ahead and install Java, which is the only other thing that we're going to need to actually set up this mod pack. And to do that, just open up Terminal. Okay, so for this server, we're actually going to be using Java 17. So in order to install that, we have to do the command sudo apt-get install openjdk-17-jdk. We'll have to put our password in there to install it. And then it will start downloading and installing it uh, for us. Now this does install the headless version and it's probably the easiest way to install Java on a Linux machine. Now about this point, the download is complete. So if we go find that download, we can extract it into our downloads. And then once that's finished, we're gonna create a folder structure to put this, uh, this folder in uh, simply to keep things organized and clean. I have all of my mod packs with the exact same folder structure so that way I know exactly where to find it in case I need to come back in and change something. Paste the server files in here. And then once we open this up, there'll be uh, both an instructions uh, as well as an installer in here. You can open up the instructions if you want. Really, the only thing that you really need inside of here is to run this Forge installer. Now, in order to run the Forge installer, you do have to make it an executable. So in order to do that, right click, um, right click, click open in terminal. And then we're going to do a chmod, which mods the permissions on that file. We're going to do plus X and then the name of the file, which in this case, you can go to properties and to make it easier, copy that, come back to terminal, paste it in here, hit enter. So now that file should be executable and we should be able to just double click it uh, in order to run it. Once you have this set up, we're going to go to the install server uh, version of this. We're going to make sure that we set our directory where we want it, which is the all the mod seven folder. And then we should just be able to click OK and it'll start installing and downloading everything to the folder that we have right here. Now we'll say this does take a little bit of time. It's downloading quite a bit of stuff in order to run this server. So just be patient and give it some time. All right. So now once it's finished, it'll say that it's successfully downloaded and installed it. Click OK on there. OK, so once we've got everything in the same folder together, we can right click open and terminal again and then do a dot backslash <laughs> and then do a dot backslash space run dot sh. And from there, it's going to start loading up your mod pack. Now, we'll say this first start takes a long time. <laughs> and that's mostly because it's trying to stitch everything together for you. It downloaded all the parts it needed, but trying to put that puzzle together is, takes a little bit of time. Um, so 
feel free to just let it run for a little bit, especially on this first launch. Um, it will take a little bit of time each time you start it up, but especially the first one takes a while. Now, once it's done and you have a server properties file inside your folder structure, um, you can go inside of there and you can change some things in there. In fact, I would strongly recommend doing that as well as like it says here, we need to accept the uh, end user license agreement before we can actually start the server. So let's do both of those things. So the end user license agreement, all you have to do is go into this file, uh, change the false to true, uh, control save it, and then close out of it. And then your server from here on out will be able to start. I wanna change a few other things real fast though. So inside of here, it's important to note your port that you're using because you'll need to use that for port forwarding later. I'm gonna go ahead and change this for my use case. Uh, the second thing you can change is this mod D. Uh, it, it basically is just a customization tool for um, when you're showing your Minecraft server on, on like a server list, it'll, it makes it look a little bit cooler and stand out. So the only other thing I want to change for this server is to change my max players to 10. We're gonna close out of that having saved it. And then I'm actually gonna go copy my pre-made mod D for this uh, Minecraft server. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then we can close out of that. And now that we have the uh, Mojang end user license agreement accepted, we got our server properties things adjusted. We can now go back to terminal run the run.sh again, and then we should be good to go. Our server should completely start up by itself and we shouldn't have to do anything else uh, to get it running. Now, just because the server's running doesn't necessarily mean that you can join it. From your home network, you should be able to just put in the IP of whatever the computer is the server's running on and join it. Now, for anybody that wants to join your server that does not live uh, with you uh, and use your home network, you will have to port forward uh, on your router. I wish I could give you like exact instructions on how to do that, but every single router is a little bit different. Uh, and because of that, the easiest way to figure out how is to Google your router and then how to port forward. Uh, you'll get YouTube videos, some Google links, but follow one of those instructions and port forward the port 25565, which is the one that Minecraft by default uses, as long as you didn't change that in your server properties file. So once you have your server set up and you have your port forwarded, the only thing your friends are gonna need in order to join your Minecraft server is your public IP address. The easiest way to get that is just to go to Google and say, hey Google, what is my public IP address? And it will give you exactly what it is, copy paste that into Discord, send it to them on a text, whatever you need to do to get it to them, and that's how they'll actually join your modded Minecraft server. So there you have it. That's how you set up your very own All The Mods 7 server. If you have any questions or technical issues, you can either join my Discord, I have a lot of people that answer questions there, or you can leave a question down in the comments below. I tend to answer all of the comments on my videos just because I wanna make sure that you can get your server set up as fast and effectively as possible. Also, you already made it this far in the video. You might as well like and subscribe because you clearly enjoyed it at least a little bit. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.